fab. Okay, I can see the comments coming through. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hi, Rachel. Hey, June. Cool. You can all see and hear me. Fabulous. Right, what am I do is we'll go through the products that I'm going to be using today quickly just while we wait for a few more people to log on. So these are the designs that we're going to be covering today. Well, not all of them, but we're going to do the M and the A today. We're going to do some ombres and then we're going to do the old English style font. So the colours that I'm going to be beginning with are Tinkerbell and Juice Lucy. These are Magpie's Neons. They're absolutely stunning. This is Tinkerbell. My camera is showing it up quite a different colour, but it's a really nice neon green. And we've got Juicy Lucy. Hi, guys. Hi, Nicola. This is our yellow Juicy Lucy. And we're also going to be using Bobbly Dazzler and Be Happy. Absolutely beautiful purples, these guys. Look at that. And we've got a lighter version too. Hi, Rachel. There we go. So when you're doing ombres, um, make your life a bit easier by choosing colours that are similar um, or in the same family. Like here, we've got the light purple and dark purple, light blue and dark blue. They're just going to blend easier when you use similar colours. You can blend, of course, you know, any colour you want, but it's just not going to be as smooth as if you choose similar colours. So try and find something similar but the magpie gels are great to ombre with they're such good quality um and pigmentation that it makes your life a bit easier so i'm just gonna chuck a pair of gloves on hey nikki did you all see nikki's tutorial um the other day on the fruits they were so cute and anona did um the opal nails as well We've got um, the list of all of the lives on the Facebook page if you search. Um, I'm sure they're probably on the um, Instagram page as well. I'm going to try and pop this on my iPad at the same time so I can keep up with your comments. But hopefully um, the rest of the Magpie team are going to be there to answer your questions hey shannon hey cara right okay i've got that on my ipad okay i've been loving watching everyone's lives so hopefully today goes smoothly hi kathleen Okay, cool. So, if I pop that there, can you guys see that there? Don't want to get in the way of the comments. Fabulous. Hey, Gillian. So, when I'm ombre, I always start with my darker colour first. Um, and then I'll use my lighter colour. And a common mistake that people make with ombre is the angle of their brush so i'm just going to quickly show you how i'm holding my brush when i ombre so when i take my product out i'm going to give it a good squeeze get rid of that excess product so i've got about that much on my brush i don't want to overload it uh, let's see if you can see this side on so loads of people when they're painting they'll paint up like this and they'll end up creating little digs in the nail. Um, what you want to do is you want to go nice and flat so that you can smooth that product out nicely. If you're just going like this and digging away at it, it's going to create more streaks um, and be a bit harder work for you. So just make sure you're laying your brush nice and flat and close to the nail. 
um, and we're gonna go in nice long gentle strokes. Oh, this is so difficult at the angle I'm at. I hope I'm gonna stay in frame. Right, I'm gonna stay here. So I'm just gonna paint half the nail in my green. This doesn't need to be neat at all because we're gonna be blending them, but I'm keeping it nice and thin. If you put too much product on, then again, you're gonna make your life harder because you're just gonna end up with big puddles on the nails um, and that can show through. So just make sure you don't have too much product on your brush and that you're just laying that gel nice and flat. So I've got my nail half and half covered and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe this brush off because this is gonna turn into my blending brush. If you don't like the brush that you're using with your gel, then you can use the gel brushes like Magpie have. Out of the way. Um, these gel brushes, which are brilliant um, to ombre as well. We've also got the ombre brush that you can use too, but we teach that on our courses. We teach that on the gold course if you want to know how to use that. My phone's all shaky. Um, you can check out the Magpie website and click on the education tab and you'll see all the information there for classes. But today I'm just going to show you it this way. So I'm just going to ever so gently pull that product down the nail. Just pulling it down like that. You're going to want to wipe your brush in between doing your strokes because you're going to have bits of green and bits of yellow. And you want to just stay in the centre of the nail. You don't want to be going over this side or over this side because then you're going to get all your colours mixed up. So this is just a first coat. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to pop it into my lamp. I'm going to pop it in for 60 seconds. Already got gel all over me. And then on my other swatch stick, I'm going to do two at a time just so that we're not staring at thin air while my other one's curing. So I'm going to go in with Bobby Dazzler now. And same again, this is my darker colour. So I'm going to go down one half of the nail using this. Not putting too much on my brush. You can see how pigmented these gels are with just that tiny amount of product. Pop that in there. And then we're going to do Be Happy. Yes, Paula, you're going to get on some more courses. We had so much fun on our nail art classes. Okay, so I'm going to go down the other side with my lighter colour. Just gently, I'm going to wipe that off before I go in again. Just in case I've got any of the dark purple on my brush. Okay, then I'm going to give my brush a good wipe. And I'm just going to lightly hold my brush flat against the nail. Pull down. Wipe off. And pull down. And wipe off. And pull down. Just gradually blending this here. We've got quite a harsh line there, so I'm just going to speed up now. Okay, now I've pulled this a wee bit too far this way, so I'm going to go in with a wee bit more Bobby Dazzler. Just that much on my brush, just so I can re-centre it. And I'm going to go over again. I'm going to wipe my Be Happy brush off. Because this is our blending brush. Blending that down. Little wee strokes. Not little wee strokes, long strokes. Okay, I'm going to pop that into Cure. I'm not too worried. It's my first layer, so we'll save it, we hope. Pop that one in for 60 seconds. Right. Hi, Claire. So we're going to go in with our Tinkerbell again. 
And we're going to go down this side of the nail. The neons are really forgiving with this. They're really nice to blend. So, got that half the nail done. Oh, or you've gone out of the frame. Sorry, guys. Sorry if you can hear my heavy breathing. <laughs> this is like right in front of my, my face. Cool. So, just popping my yellow on there. And then I'm going to wipe that off. I'm just going to blend that product in, gently pulling down, wiping it off, gently pulling it down, wiping it off. Takes time, ombre. Takes time. So I'm just going to blend that little bottom bit there. Fab. I'm going to chuck that one in. Hi, Laura. No, you've not missed much. I'm blending Tinker, not Tinker Taylor, Tinker Bell and Juicy Lucy and Bobby Dazzler and Be Happy. So, second coat of Bobby Dazzler and Be Happy. Squeezing that product off my brush so I've not got too much on. We don't want a pool party of products. It's one of my favourite pop my favourite gels. So popular in the salon. Okay. Pulling that down the nail. And then we're going in with Be Happy. Squeezing that excess product off. And we're gonna go down this side of the nail. Now I'm already going a wee bit ski with, but don't worry. Hope they're going to save it. Oh, going out of the frame again. So again, we're focusing on this middle section here. I'm just going to ever so lightly pull that product down. Pulling that product down. If you can stay in the in the same place like I'm doing here, you don't need to wipe your brush off. But people tend to go a bit side to side and that's when you can get your colors mixed up so just try and stay central okay so i'm quite happy with that i'm gonna pop that one in hey marna okay pop that on in what's karina saying Ombre was my nemesis until I used Magpie Gels. Yeah, Sophie did a fab tutorial with flowers and leaves the other day on the group and it's saved if you search it um, for Sophie's Live, you'll find it. And it was really good. Right, so I'm going to go in with a third coat of Tinkerbell. Usually I wouldn't. Oh, speak of the devil, there's Sophie. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do my third coat just because it's a neon just going to build that up. Just going down the side of the nail. And then we're going to go in with our yellow. God, I'm so sorry I keep going out of um, frame. I'm working at an angle. Right, so we've got the yellow on. Wipe it off. And then we're just going to blend that down. Nice light touch, staying in the centre of the nail and keeping that brush nice and flat, nice and low. So we got that nice blend. Give it a wee wipe off. I'm just going to blend that bottom bit. Wee bit more. Okay, I'm happy with that. Pop it in. Okay, 
So we've got our ombre. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop some Gimme Strength on top of this just to cap it. Um, when I'm painting on colour, I'll usually remove the colour and then paint over it, but I don't want to mess up that ombre. So I'm just going to get Gimme Strength and do a layer. If you guys don't have Gimme Strength, you need Gimme Strength. It is so amazing. I usually use it, um, well, I always use it for all my clients under their gel polish, but it's brilliant for art, for mixing, um, your dust and your pigments and things like that. It's definitely a must have for your kit. Let me see how our comments are doing. Rachel, what's the two hardest colours to blend? Um... The hardest colours you're going to blend are ones that are far away in the colour wheel. So, you know, if you're using, like, a red and a green, it's going to be difficult to blend because they're not from the same family. Um, so you're better using colours that are similar. Although it can be a nice effect when you use products that are far away from each other, um, you are going to have an easier time if you use ones that are similar. I'm missing seeing you, Rachel. Rachel works in the same salon as me. We've not seen each other in so long. I hope you're well and surviving with your lovely wee toddler. <laughs> She's so cute, bless her. Okay, I'm going to do a final coat on this, um, this one just because it's still a wee bit of peely wally. Okay, so I'm just going in with my green. I'm going to use this with my yellow. Nicola, would you use this technique for a French look? If you mean a French ombre, no. Because it is horizontal, I wouldn't. I'd use an ombre brush or I'd use my striper brush. Or you could use a sponge. Indiglo has done a fabulous wee tutorial on um facebook but she'll have it on her on the magpie instagram page i'm sure it's in the highlights and she's been using oh totally out of screen sorry guys she's been using um, a brush and so has amanda lovely educator um she's got them on the groups as well so search search at the top of the page um and you shall find french ombres and you will find the looks with Look at that, I've got a wee bit of green up there. You'll find the sponge techniques. Amanda's also going to do um, acrylic ombres. So tune in for that if you want to see it in acrylic. Okie dokie, so we are all ombre Just gonna pop these lids on these before I spill them everywhere. And we're gonna get into our font. So, where are my tips that I was practicing on? These are some that I was practicing. This is what we're gonna go for today. This M and A bit. There's a, another version of an M I did and some different numbers. There's so many different um, varieties of this type of font that you can do. Um, and what you want to do is if you go on um, Pinterest or on um, Google and just search for old English style font or um, old fashioned font and then you'll see loads will come up that you can copy from. So I'm just going to cap this guy. Sophie's wanting a close-up. There you go, Sophie. Beautiful. So I'm just going to cap this with Gimme Strength. I love doing ombres. I used to hate it. I used to hate doing them um, when I didn't use the Magpie gels because the gels I was using were so thin and watery and they weren't pigmented and oh, it was just such a stressful time. So... When you're using products that are good quality, you will have better results. It's just a fact. Okay. Okay. 
see. Cool. So, <laughs> you guys see them of the fonts? Uh, these are my fonts. I love the G. I think it's just such a cool style of writing. I actually studied um, this at uni. I was studying to become an English teacher before I started doing nails. And we had to read old English manuscripts. And oh my God, it was so tedious because every third word you had to translate because it was like old English. But they were so beautiful, all of the, the fonts that they used in the manuscripts. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the tacky layer of Gimme Strength using some Prep and Dehydrate. I should be using a lint-free wipe, but I'm not because I've left them all at the salon. I'm using this. Oh, this will give you guys a laugh. I sent my boyfriend to the shop to get kitchen roll and he came back with this. Have you ever seen something... So strange in your life. Comes off like that in little circle funnels. <laughs> but hey, it gets the job done. I'm not complaining. I've never seen any kitchen roll like that in my life. It's eco-friendly though. So we're saving the planet. Okay, so I'm just going to give that a wee wipe. So that we've got that tacky layer gone. Right. So, let's get into the paint. So, I'm going to be using Magpie's Black Gel Paint. I absolutely love using the gel paints. Um, they're lovely to work with. They come in loads of different colours. And they don't have a tacky layer, which is good. They don't bleed. So, I'm just going to pop a bit of this in my dish. Look at the nip of this. Can you see... All them scratch marks, and I've already got it all over me. Cause I was, cause I'm in the home salon, I've got a window right in front of me, and all my products have literally been setting on my palette so quickly. It's been a wee nightmare, but we are getting through it. So, I'm gonna pop that black on. Wipe that off. Okay. So I've got a wee bit of my black on my dish. And we're going to begin doing our A. So for your fonts like this, these are quite a simple version. Like if you go online, you'll see quite complex versions. But what you want to do is break it down as far as you can. Um, you know, because it's letters you're just going to break it down to a basic M and a basic A and then you're going to go in with all your little fine detail bits. You know, you start off with the G and then you add your fine lines. Um, if you want, you can get pencil and draw an outline on your design or you can do little dots on the nail. But personally, I just like to eyeball it. I find doing dots to dots stress me out. Um... So yeah, I'm just going to try and eyeball it. <laughs> um, when you're using your striper brush, this is my striper brush. Um, it's a bit squint. We'll have some fun with that today. I've gone through so many striper brushes because I'm bad and I don't put my lids on them. Buy the lids <laughs> if you're getting the brushes, which I do recommend. They're really, really good to work with. And what we're going to do is we are going to make sure that we are covering that whole brush. And we're just dragging that product through. You'll have seen all the girls doing this. Dragging it through so that we've got a nice, even layer of product. And then when I paint um, a straight line, you want to let your brush do the work for you, okay? So you're going to place your brush down and you're going to lie it flat. And then you're going to drag it through, okay? You don't want to just be using the tip of your brush. You don't want to just... I hope you guys can see this. You don't want to pop that tip down and then pull like that because you're going to find it harder to go in a straight line. You want to get your whole brush 
flat down first and then you want to pull it through. Okay? So, let's give this a bash. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to pull that product through. I'm going to give it a few wee strokes. Not in frame. I'm going to balance myself using my pinky. And I'm going to pop it down at the top where I want to start. I'm going to lie my brush down flat. I'm going to pull it through. Okay. And we've got a bit of fluff, of course. Of course we do. Go away. I'm not going to be too fast about these being um, perfect because I'm going to bulk this out, so I'm not really worried about that. We're going to beef these lines right out, so don't get stressed about them being perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the other side. Is this going to be straight? Ah, we'll see. Popping that tip of the brush down, lying it flat, and pulling it through gently, 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 and then I'm going to lift up. Cool. So we're going to be squint, but as I said, I'm not fussed. I'm going to pull that down again, just so I can get a wee bit more length. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a short line. So when I'm doing a short line, you could use your detailer brush for this, but I'm just going to use my striper. And I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and drag like that, rather than using the whole, the whole thing. So... Nice and balanced. And using the tip of my brush, pulling through and lifting up. Okay, we have an A. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to beef up this side of my A because this style of text and um, what makes it so pretty is the contrast between thick lines and thin lines. So you want to make sure that you've got a good contrast going. Sorry if this is shaking. I'm all shaky. So, same again. I'm going to pull that product through. I'm going to get a good amount of product on my brush. So we're going to beef these bad boys out. So, same again. Popping my brush down. Lying it flat and pulling it through. Okay. And I'm going to go again. Making sure I don't have any bobbles. I've got a good amount of product. Popping that brush down, laying it flat, and pulling it through. So we nice and thick. Okay. Cool. I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to beef up my centre line. This is what I'm talking about. Can you see that? That is what we want to avoid. So if you get a bit like that, you're going to pull it through. So I'm just going to go over that wee centre bit using the tip of my brush now on that section. And we're just going to try and thicken it up to the same thickness as the other side of the A. Okay, we have an A. Right, I'm going to cure this just in case I mess the next step up which is highly probable so we're going to pop that into cure the beautiful thing with gels is once you've cured it um and you're working with wet gel when you wipe it away the cured gel is obviously going to stay so you don't need to get stressed out about making mistakes once you've cured it so let me just have a wee read of the comments are we all okay yeah, we're doing fine. Horizontal ombres. Yeah, they are difficult. Ombres are hard. They look so easy, but they are hard. It just, it does take practice um, to get it good. 
but have a play around and definitely try the magpie gels if you've not um used them then now is the time to get your hands on them and get practicing because they do they make such a big difference okay so what i'm going to go in with next is i'm going to go in with my detailer brush and um, this is just a shorter version of your striper brush and this is what we're going to use for those fine details okay where's my stand gone there we go okay so what we've got to do is these little wee flicks to the side so i'm going to do the same again i'm going to pop my brush through and i'm going to pull it up at the end and what I'm going to do for these little flicks is I'm going to pop my brush flat and then I'm just going to lift up to create a tiny little flip. That's all we're doing there. Gillian, what's the hardest letter to do? Probably a B. B or an, yeah, B because it's quite difficult to, well, I find doing curved lines really difficult. So there's loads in that. Challenge yourselves. Do the whole alphabet. <laughs> okay, so. Can you see that all right? I'm just going to pop my brush down. And I'm just going to lift up. And that's going to create a wee flick for our A. And then we are going to do our... We flick at the top of the A. When I was practicing earlier, I kept getting this bit wrong, so I'm going to hold my breath. Right, popping that down, pressing the product down, and then lifting up. And I'm just going to pull this round the edge and point it. Just like that. Like a little elf boot. A mini little elf shoe. Okay, it's got a nice little bit of detail. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab my striper. How have I lost my striper brush? Oh, there it is. Just going to go down this just again. Popping my brush down, letting it do the work, putting it flat, and pulling it through. Just so that we're nice and defined. Right, what we're going to do now is I'm going to do a little line underneath the A. It's really typical of this type of text to have, you know, your contrast of your thin and your thick lines. For these ones, some of them I just made up because by the time that you've done a couple of them, you do really start to get the hang of the style of text and the characteristics of that. Okay, so I'm just going to come to here and do a nice, oh, nice little line. Just there, that's not very straight, is it? It'll do, it'll do. Okay, then we're going to do another little flick i'm actually going to turn this around remember when you're doing freehand on your clients you can always turn their hands around if you're struggling to go a certain way turn their finger around um and you might be able to work better so i'm just going to place the tip of my brush down pull it down and curve just like that so i've got a wee bit a wee bit of something extra there and then the last part of my A, I'm just going to do a tiny little line with my detailer. Where are we? Just to finish this design off. Okay. A bit too much of my brush there. And then I'm just going to pull that like that. 
And then we're going to pull it to the other side too. Okay. So we have our A. Quite straightforward. Happy with that. So we're going to pop them in. Of course, you can add, you know, more and more to these designs. You don't need to stop there. You can add as many little details as you want. So I'm going to do an M next. How are my comments doing? Kelly, am I going to do a curved one? Hell no. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do a curved one on camera because um, I know it won't work. And I'll start flapping. I'm freaking out. So we're gonna stick stick to the straight lines. Oh god, flipping all over the place. I hope that's that's alright there. Cool, so for the M we are gonna begin by doing three straight lines and then we're just gonna do as we did with the A. We're gonna build up from our basics. Now I'm going to pop a top coat on the A while we wait. I'm using Don't Be Tacky. This is my absolute favourite top coat. It is a no-wipe top coat. And I love it. Courtney, you're not too late. We're just about to do an M. And you can, um, you can watch them all back. They're all going to be on the group. So don't stress. Don't stress. Tips for a curved one. So... My tips for curved one is to break your curved lines into sections. Don't do a whole curve at once. Um, how have I got a hair in there? Don't do the whole um, curved one at once. Just do it in sections. You know, even if it takes you a couple of um, attempts to do it, it's better to do it in sections. Oh, my lamp's run out of battery. Let me plug her in. Yeah, so small, small sections, I'd use your detailer brush rather than your striper brush to do the curved ones. Or maybe we'll do it. I'll maybe do a YouTube tutorial um, on some curved ones. If you guys are that desperate. Okay, so let's do our M. Same again. Pulling that product through, getting that whole brush full, dragging it through like that. So we've got a nice, even distribution of product. And same again, we're going to pop the brush down, lay it flat, and drag it through, okay? None of this, because it's just not going to work. It's not going to happen. Right. So. I'm dragging it through. Oh. 20% battery. It's not good. That voice. <laughs> I hate my accent. Your guys' accents are dreamy. They make me fall asleep a little bit. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get all the other educators' lives and listen to them when I need to be calmed. Okay, so balancing with my pinky there. Aiming for the middle. Popping it down. Lay my brush flat. Pulling it down. Just like that, Okay. Pulling it down and pulling it through. Simples, yeah? Okay. So we're going to try and do another two lines, same distance apart, if we can. Popping it down, laying it flat, 
pulling it through. Okay, I've got a wee bit too long, but I'm not worried. Be fine. Cool. Dragging that brush through. Final line. We're a bit off center, but hey, it's okay. So pop that brush down, line it flat, and pulling it through. You guys are going to be hearing that in your sleep tonight. Pop it down, pull it flat. Okie dokie. So, what you can do if you have done me and you're going ski whiffing all over the shop, this is where your trusty silicone tool comes in handy. What I like to do for my cleanup is get a wee bit of my prep and dehydrate in a wee spray bottle, spray it, wipe it a wee bit off, and then what you can do is just grab that like that. Oh, I have camera. Sorry, guys. Nobody needs to know what happened, okay? Clean that up like so. Right, so I'm going to quickly flash cure this. So we're good. Pop that in. <laughs> I know, I always, when I'm doing clients, I always hold my breath as well. It's just nerve-wracking, isn't it? All right, how's our A getting on? I think we're going to give this wee guy another top coat. And he'll be quite happy. I just love the look of an ombre. In the summer, I always get them clients that want the full rainbow ombre. And it does look beautiful, but it takes so much time. Make sure you're booking enough time. Um, if you're doing this on a client, if you're doing ombres and this font, it is going to take you a long time. So make sure you are booking a sufficient time. Okay. So we're going to add our little details to our M. We are going to do these little, little bridges now. Yeah. Oh God, I've just popped my pinky in that. So, same again. Popping that brush down. Stop shaking the screen, Ruth. Sorry if you guys are getting dizzy. <laughs> Right. So, what we're going to do, man, frame, is I'm just going to do a little half bit, just like that. So, this is what I mean when you're doing your curves. Don't try and do the whole section, just do one bit and then another bit. Take your time. There's no rush with gel. It's not going to dry. So just take your time. And if you don't like it, just wipe it off. Okay. So I'm not worried about this bit not matching either because I'm going to beef all these out. So don't worry. Okay. Got a wee bit much on my brush there. So I'm going to pop it down again and just curve it around. And then I'm just going to pull down the side there. Cool. So we've got our skeleton of our M. I'm going to thicken them lines up. So going through my paint, dragging it through the paint. How am I doing for time? I don't know how good the time it is. Has it been days? Has it been hours? Right. Okay, so all these um, vertical lines are going to be made a little bit thicker. So we're just going to go in as we've been doing. 
tip of the brush, line it flat, pulling it down. You obviously want to make sure that you've got the same thickness at the top and the bottom of your lines. Um, these designs are really good practice for that. And I'm also not worried about this little bit here because um, we're going to fancy that up a bit as well. Pull a bit up there. 45 minutes. Thank you, Jenny. Taking my sweet time. I'll try and hurry up. Okay. So. Dragging through that brush again. There's that pesky bubble we were talking about earlier. Do not go on your gel with that. Or you're going to have lumps and bumps. Just pull that through like that, and you'll be grand. So, going over the edge, popping it down, laying it flat, and dragging it through. Just like that. Pulling it down, just building it up. Cool. Same again on the other side. And pop it down. Pull it through. Just like that. The Magpie Striper Brush honestly does make so much of a difference when you're doing straight lines. Okay. Lovely. Right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to beef up the sides of my M. And then we'll get our little details. Sorted. So, I'm just going to go from this side and we're just going to match that up. And we're going to go on the outside of that and pull it around. Just so that we've got a nice contrast between the thickness of the lines. I'm just going to make that a little bit darker. Whoa. Starting to get the shakes now. Okay. I'm going to do the same for this part of the end. I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to go thick on this side and thin on this side. Just lifting my brush up when I'm getting to the thin part. Okay. Pulling that product through. Cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna cure that pop that one in how are our comments doing how do you get the brushes back straight on the like brushes yours are flicking out so there's a few things you can do and um, what i would recommend is getting a cup of boiling hot water and um dip in your brush in that and make sure that you condition it conditioning it with your gel um you know you get bits of get your gel and make sure that you you're running it through your brushes like that and don't be using any liquids on your brushes like acetone or that because that's going to wreck them oh nona's just done a youtube video fab um go check out nona's youtube um and she'll sort you out there but yeah that would be my top tips 
um, boiling water and using gel to just pull it together. I've saved a fair few brushes that I've thought were gone by using the boiling boiling water method. So definitely recommend that. Okay, so we are just going to add our details to this now. So I'm going to, just as I've been doing, get that whole brush covered. And we are going to do a little wee flick like we did with the A on the side. I'm just going to lay my brush down and then lift up just using the tiniest top bit of my brush. Can you see that? So I'm just placing my brush down and lifting up. Yeah, just like that. Let your brushes do the work for you. Okay, we're going to sort out this middle one because he's looking nice and messy. So I'm going to get my brush again. Make sure you've got no bubbles on the end of it. And you're going to place it down and pull it up. And we're going to try and get them the same. Placing it down, pulling it up, okay? Just going to match that bottom bit. Pull that side down. So, I mean, they're sisters, they're not twins. It's cool, we'll manage. And then for this side, I'm going to do a little triangle. So, I'm going to begin by just doing a little V. I'm just going to place it down, place my brush down like that flat and then we're going to get a bit more and I'm going to place my down, my brush down flat like that and then I'm going to get a bit more and I'm going to place my brush flat down like that I'm barely moving it yeah I'm letting the brush do my job so dipping it in not got too much product on my brush can you see that? I'm going to place it down. Little V there. And I'm going to come around here. Place it down. Tiny wee drag, little V there. And I'm just going to go across the top like that. And fill that in. Get a little bit more product. And pop that on. Yeah. So they're not as um even as I'd like them to be. My M's a bit skew but you get you get the general idea. Pull that down a bit. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add some details to the top here. Um and I'm gonna add a little bit here. So I'm gonna flip my nail around. If this was a client, I'd get them to turn their hand around for me. When I'm doing art anyone on a client, I'll get them to turn their hand around for me, or even if I'm not doing art, because you want to make sure that your design is central and um, good from your view as well as their view. So again, I'm going to pop my brush flat and then I'm going to lift up to create a little flick. I'm getting a good bit of product on my brush there. You see that? So I'm popping my brush down. I'm pulling it round, pulling it down, pulling it round, okay, just like that, and then I'm going to pull up the tips of my M, just slightly, oh, sorry, so just where that arch is, I'm just going to do a little flick like that. Nothing drastic. Just pulling it up. I'm going to do the same on that one. Just pulling it up. I'm going to make them a wee bit bigger. I'll regret that a bit. Just doing like little triangle shapes. Cool. 
Right. I'm going to pop this in to cure. And then, in fact, that's a lie. We're going to do a long line. Last line. These will be delighted. Um, just to highlight this. Can you see? So again, placing that brush nice and flat and pulling it through. Yeah? Oh, Ruth, you didn't cure that, did you? Oh dear. Rookie mistake. So what we're going to do is get our silicone tool. I'm just going to wipe that away. This is why you should cure. Oh, oh. In between. Fix this little guy. Nobody will ever know. Pull that down. And pull it up. Okay, we've saved it. Right, pop that one into cure. Almost finished. Okay. So there's our finished A. If any of you guys missed the start. And all I'm going to do to finish this is I'm just going to add this little center, center bit here. And that'll be it. Let's okay. So for this one, we're going to use our detailer again. We're going to dip it in, we're going to place the tip down, and then we're going to lift up to get that nice little flick. So, we're going to go across the centre, we're going to try and stay straight, balancing that pinky, and I'm going to pop that down flat, and I'm going to flick, and I'm going to lift. Yeah, just to create a little little wee curved line then we're going to do it the opposite way on this side I'm going to pop it down and I'm going to flick and I'm going to lift it just ties it together quite nicely okay so I'm going to put that in for a full cure and then I'm going to top coat and that shall be us hope you guys have enjoyed this wee tutorial definitely tune in for all the other educator lives um as i said it's on the the facebook page um search for live at the top of the group and you'll see the girls that have done it and the schedule tomorrow we have got the fabulous june loon is doing acrylic she's doing acrylic flowers 3d flowers and um, she's doing reverse french um, so that's definitely one to get tuned into. Okay, this one's almost cured and then we'll get our top coat one. If you're doing your ombre and um, you're really not happy with it, what you can do is add blossom where's my blossom there's my blossom glitter and these are some nhs ones i did and that's blossom all over the back sometimes um if your blend isn't as seamless as you'd like it to be pop on blossom and it will be nice and forgiving loads of people think it'll come out white but it won't comes out nice and clear okay i'm gonna top coat this and that will be us Okay. Nice, good helping. 
of Don't Be Tacky. And pop that in and that'll be it. Let me see if there's any comments I've missed while I'm waiting. It is like eyeliner. Took me years to figure out how to do my winged eyeliner. So don't be um, put off if you try this and it doesn't work the first time. Um, it's definitely a practice thing and definitely pay attention to the angles of your brushes. That's something a lot of people forget about. If you're ever watching a tutor tutorial or anything and you're, you know, doing as you should be, um, pay attention to your your angles and how you're holding your brush and if you're holding it at the top or the bottom or whatever and yeah just have a play around but have fun with it i loved creating these designs so hopefully you guys enjoyed it too and there we go your m and your a you can try and write the rest of magpie if you're feeling in the zone now so yeah thanks so much for watching guys and we will hopefully see you all tomorrow for june's tutorial Bye.